All right, sweet. Welcome to the session. This is our Sunday night overview. What we're going to do is we're going to start off by just walking through a few pairs, making sure you guys have a full understanding of what's coming up in the next few days. And that way you guys will have a, a really clear picture of what to look out for. Because I feel like if you're not doing your markups or if you're just new to trading and you're jumping on, taking swipe trades, and you're not really getting a full grasp of what's going on in the market, you're just copying and pasting, you're doing yourself a disservice. And here at Team Tech Profits, we want to make sure everybody understands what's going on in the market. We don't care if you're just trying to come in and recruit. We don't care if you're just saying, you know what, I just want to copy and paste. We're going to do our due diligence to make sure that you have a full understanding or you have the option or the access to having a full understanding of what's going on in the market, regardless of your position in IML. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and transition this back over to the chart. Now, if you guys can see my screen, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Okay, cool. So I know we're all good. All right. So as always, we always want to start off on a daily time frame. Daily time frames give us just enough information. Dre raises hand. <laughs> it gives us just enough information for us to be able to see what we need for the upcoming week. Now, I'm not going to go like into super duper, you know, detail of every single thing that you want to look out for. But I do want to talk about the fact that when you have, when you have a market have in, a, in a trending motion like we have right now, where it's making consistent, you know, highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs. This is really nice because now we can find an area where we can see potential reversals or potential continuations based off a of certain zone. So knowing that we have like a nice zone here where there's structure moving straight across here, this is really strong. So now I'll just basically take it, take one of my horizontal tools. If you don't know how to access a lot of these tools, let me remove this real quick. Okay. There we go. So if you don't know how to access some of these tools, this is platform is MetaTrader 4 on your laptop. All you're going to do is come up here, click the horizontal tool right here. We'll bring that down. And I'm going to just basically put another line right here. And the reason why I did this in this zone, just like this, is I've noticed that this area is a flat zone here. But the thing about it being flat, let me remove this over because it's like right on the zone. I need it not to be at here. Here, there we go. Okay, so the reason why I put this here is that this engulfing candle is pretty much right where I want to see it at. And then when I look left, I have another engulfing candle here. And this candle here with this top and this bottom is pretty much equal to where this candle's area is with this top. And this bottom here, I can move this on just a little bit more, like right about there. So, yeah, I'm using engulfing candles. <clears throat> excuse me. I'm using engulfing candles to define where my potential supply and demand zones will be. Okay. Now, if you're brand new and you're like supply and demand, that's what, is that like support and resistance? Is that like a ceiling on the floor? It's very similar, but this is what the banks are looking at when they decide to enter and exit trades. And I'm trying to make sure that as consistently profitable traders, we're not trading like the 95% of people who lose money in the market. Okay. 95% of people are simply just drawing out support, resistance, and just saying, okay, cool, let's make some money. And at the end of the day, they lose a lot because they don't have a full understanding of supply and demand zones. When you have an understanding of supply and demand zones, you know exactly where the banks want to stop and start once they start moving price. Okay. So understanding that this is a nice zone to keep in mind because we have structure here. And if we look left, let's see if we have even more structure. If it comes back up to this level, boom, found even more structure as we look left. So now we know this area is a very important price zone to pay attention to. Mind you, we're still on a daily time frame. Okay. So we're not going to go crazy marking up every single zone all up and down. But I just want to make sure you guys have a real understanding of what to look out for. All right. So this is just one area here, one zone. I'm going to actually draw one more area that I've noticed price is respecting here. And it's down right here. I've noticed that inside of this zone here, right up in here, this is an area where price has respected in the past. Okay. 
right here looks very, very lucrative. So to make sure we don't get confused and we end up thinking that this is a zone in here and this is a zone in here, what we're going to do is just use our rectangle tool and we're going to highlight these areas. So now we'll have these available to us. We won't kind of get confused because if you just draw lines, it'll start to get confusing as you work yourself through the week. And you're like, wait, was this the top? Or was this the bottom? Or was this the bottom? Or was this the top? So you want to make sure you put these color-coded areas together. So throughout the week, if something moves back into your zone, you have a lot of information to work with. Now you can essentially make a better decision, okay? So I'm going to just top off this level, not too far, not too big of a gap, like right in here, because this is pretty much where price had to either retest or break out from this zone. And I'm going to drop one more rectangle in here now after we're done with this session i want you guys to know you can feel free to type any questions you have in the discord and we can go through in more descriptive manners and kind of break it down and also inside of the discord we have a voice channel in there as well so you can like actually go into the voice channel and request somebody from leadership to come in and actually walk you through something if you are confused and you can use the voice channel from your laptop or your cell phone after you download the discord app so it's really convenient. You can be out in the world and just say, hey, I got a question. Can one of you guys hop on and help me out? Rather than doing all that typing, we can directly just talk to each other inside of Discord. It's like super duper convenient. Okay, so we have a good zone right now for Euro Odd on the daily time frame. We're going to go down to the lower time frame on the four hour, and we're going to just kind of like double check our work just to make sure our zones are making sense, right? So right now, price is respecting this area every time it gets to the zone. We're starting to see it make some decisions inside of here. Now we're moving into a more of a selling motion here where price is starting to curve back to the downside. We've seen it make a high, make a low now. And remember I told you guys, on the daily time frame, we're just getting zones where we know price likes to tend to reverse. So these zones aren't end-all, be-all zones. They're just areas for us to keep our eyes on once price gets close to these areas, okay? But right here, same thing that we remember back from the, from the daily, starts to pay attention on the four hour where or pay dividends on a four hour, where right here, what is this? An engulfing candle. So guess what I'm gonna do? Mark this up as well, okay? I'm not gonna put a color-coded area into it, but I just wanna make sure with this engulfing, this is gonna allow me to make a decision where if something closes above this area, it'll tend to retest and we can see a move to the upside even higher. But now, price is coming back to this area and it's testing, and this is a, a fresh demand zone. I'm sorry, fresh supply zone where price is coming back up to test the supply zone and potentially can push back down. And our indicators are giving us a nice, strong idea of what could be happening next as well on this four hour time frame. So, just a quick heads up on this pair. This could be a great setup for a sale. Now, I know you guys may be saying, well, Curtis, how do you know it's going to go for a sale just because it's coming up inside of this zone? It could still go higher, right? It can keep booming to the upside. This is where having the skill set pays off, okay? So you could be brand new, have no idea what I'm talking about, but I wanna show you how you can actually leverage the efforts of the team, okay? This is your first, let's just argue argument's sake, say it's your first weekend, right? You've been in trading, get paid, you've been watching everybody make money, and all of a sudden you're like, man, I wanna really like start getting into this because this looks really interesting. How, what, what's my first step? Okay, you go on through the steps, right? You watch IML Academy, you watch basics one through four, you're understanding some of the terminology and the lingo, but you want to get a little bit more, you know, training. You want to get a little bit more one-on-one -on -one attention. This is why we made the Discord, guys. This is why we're. This is why we do these lessons and these sessions every Sunday. Because now you guys get to see how our ideology is with how we look at the charts and how we analyze the markets. And now you can kind of reach out and say, you know what? I watched the video and it made sense. But some of these things that you guys are saying, you're moving through so fast, I don't truly understand it. So now we can back up, slow down explain it to you, have more of a one-on-one -on -one intimate moment saying, okay, you know what? Hop on the uh, hop on the uh, Discord voice chat. We're both going to go look at Euro Odd together, right? And now we're inside of that, that, that pair together and I'm on a time frame, you're on the same time frame and I'm calling out, hey, check out that third candle from the last. And we're going to say, hey, this movement here is popping up because of an engulfing in the past. And I will mark this up together from that Discord and now we can see exactly what each other needs to see. Or let's say if you need more attention, even more so, we can make another Zoom chat and get a couple guys on there as well. So this is where I want you guys to really know this isn't a single person sport, right? When you join IML and Team Take Profits, this is a team sport. We are Team Take Profits, okay? This isn't just, all right, come in and figure it out. <laughs> Welcome to the group.
This is, hey, welcome to the team. Let's get you started. Let's get you making this money. And the thing is, we can't help you if you don't speak up, okay? I have a lot of people that join and they're so, you know, busy living life and everything else. They're making up every reason why they didn't ask for help, right? And then when the trade goes south, they don't understand it. They're blaming everybody under the sun instead of just saying, I could have reached out to somebody and really understood this and I could have potentially avoided this trade from the start. Okay, guys, so understanding what I'm showing you with these engulfings, it takes time to understand how I'm finding these zones and how I'm potentially making sure that I'm on the right side of the market. But it's very easy to just ask me, hey, how do I understand engulfings? Can we set up a time frame where you can show me engulfings? I need to understand these supply and demand zones a lot better because I see you guys are getting in and the moment you're getting in, it goes into profit. I'm the, it's, it's no drawdown. How do I understand how to get in and I don't have to deal with all that negative movement before I get into profit? You guys are getting in. It's going right into profit the moment you enter trades. I want that for myself and we can show you how to do that, but you have to speak up. You have to ask for help. You cannot sit on the sideline and say, no one helped me. No one knew I was confused. We won't know until you tell us, guys. All right? And if you're brand new and you're on the fence and you've just been in trade and get paid for a while, it's time to step up and say, hey, I really want to learn this. It's no more excuses. My time is now. Let me get involved. Right? Because what I'm doing isn't getting me where I want to go. I need, more, I need more information. I need more attention. Okay, guys? So right here, price is coming up, testing this level. Engulfing zone right here, showing a nice supply zone. I'm gonna even go to a lower time frame and show you what I mean. So we're on a four hour now. We went from the daily down to the four hour, and we see price pulling up into an area here, potentially ready for a reversal. I'm gonna go back on the 30 minute and check this out. Price is already consolidating here, already gapped down and pulled back higher. And now we're dropping back down again, come out of that zone. And this is already showing us going down into a selling motion here. We could potentially see this kind of start to pull higher into London and then one more drop off again. But this is why I always tell you guys, when we start off the week on Sunday, go back to the four hour. Oh, my video back. <laughs> there we go. When we start off the week on Sundays, this is why I always tell you guys, I am very, very cautious when it comes to entering positions on a Sunday. I don't want to get involved in the market and I don't have enough data, okay? Because I always ask everybody like, hey, Sunday Sunday evening, the market just opened up. You know what the banks are going to do, right? Right? Somebody on this chat has to know what the banks are going to do every Sunday, right? Nobody knows? Me neither. That's why my money's not in the market. Doesn't make sense. Also, when Sunday opens up, what bank is actually open on Sunday? Right. What banks are opening up on Sunday? The Australian banks. Right. Then leading to the Asian session banks. And then after that, we have the, the London session banks. At that point, I'm going from Australian to Asian session, then to London session. I have no idea what any of these banks are going to truly do the moment the market opens up. I have no business being involved. This is why I always say if you wait until Tuesday, right after midnight, catching that Tuesday early morning London session, now you have enough data. Because you've let all of this happen, the gap from the market opening up, pull it higher, pull it down, it starts to balance itself out. And now it starts making some real movement. Now I can start finding actual areas where I can find my entries now. Now I know what I should be doing for my account. Okay, guys, I don't want you guys jumping into the market and just not having enough information. Like it just doesn't make sense to be rushing it because you're excited. And my thing is this, if you're excited, is that a strategy or is that emotion? Emotion all day. So you make it makes no sense to jump into the market, trade emotionally, right? So we're all at all costs. We're gonna make sure go back to the four hour. We're gonna make sure that we're approaching the market in a non-emotional, non-biased way. All right. I've studied all of these billionaire traders, millionaire traders, and the first thing they tell you is you have to detach your emotions from your trading strategy. Period. You have to approach the market with an unbiased mindset every single time you're about to enter a trade, period. Because if the market starts to move in one direction and you have a bias saying, oh, it's gonna go up for a buy, it's going up, it's going up. And all of a sudden it drops down and you're telling yourself, it'll come back, it'll come back. I think it's gonna come back. I feel like it's gonna come back. Your feelings and your thoughts have nothing to do with what the market is showing you. You trade what you see. You don't trade what you feel, okay?
because now you start to have a bias and you're telling yourself, I thought it was going to go higher. It looked like it was going to go higher. And then it changed on you. So you knew that look turned to something different, right? This thing was going higher, higher, and all of a sudden, boom, big engulfment to the downside. And it came back up, retested this area, and then dropped back off, came up, almost tested area, and dropped off again. And now we're back in this zone again for a potential move to the downside. And I want to show you guys something. When this big drop off happened, right? What was this blue line doing? Right? Just pay attention. Drop off happened. Blue line was what? Arcing to the downside. Right? Right? All of a sudden, price pulled back higher. We had a pull back here, a little sideways action. And then right here, when it was arcing to the downside, what happened? Big drop off. Right? Another pull back up, arcing to the downside, and drop off. Now, right now, guess what's happening? Arcing to the downside, potential drop off. So these are these are the things we want you guys to start noticing, and we're going to start training you on more consistently on how to make sure you take the best possible setups. You don't want to trade your feelings. You trade what you see, what you see, what you see, what's about to happen here, what you see, okay? Now, I want you guys to know, like, I don't want to want you to feel like, oh, that's easy. I'll just follow this all day and I'll make money. No, no again, because now you're coming into the market and you're saying my indicators are the end all be all. If I follow my indicators, they'll give me everything I need. The indicators are just going to be more confirmation for what the actual price action is showing you, where the engulfings lie, what is the true area you need to pay attention to, because now I see an engulfing to the downside and the market's been moving, moving lower ever since this move happened. Now I know this area is very important because now I want to see price pushing away. And now that I see something like this, this gives me a lot of understanding and a lot of optimistic toward op optimism towards a sale position because patterns tend to repeat in the market like we always know. And now I'm not coming in here saying, ooh, I feel like it's going to drop or ooh, I hope it goes down. I'm saying no. In the past, price got to a point where it arc down, drop lower. Price got to a point where it's ready to arc down, drop lower. Price got to a point where it arced down, it dropped lower. But now I have this supply zone here. Give me a heads up. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, so now that I understand that all of my indicators are working in conjunction, what's the most important indicator that we can use in the Forex market or any trading? I can tell you guys, if you want me to tell you, give me a thumbs up. I'll tell you the best indicator we got. I can tell you right now, I need to never let you down. Give me a thumbs up if you want me to see if you want me to tell you the indicator. It comes standard. I got you. I see you, Marla. It's your big old thumb. <laughs> it's your military thumb. <laughs> All right. This is it right here. The best indicator that you can use when you trade is your own self-judgment, your own judgment in the market, your own actions. Okay. If you depend on anything on this chart, before you depend on your own actions, you're gonna fail, period. Flat out, there's, there's no other way around it. I, I wish I could tell you, oh, the MACD's always gonna be right. Oh, the Bollinger Bands, when we slap those bad boys on here, you're always gonna win. It doesn't work that way. Your own actions are gonna make sure that you, can, you stay consistently profitable. Your actions are the best indicator. And the thing with your actions, this is where it all boils down to. Your actions have to be what? Unbiased. Your actions have to be unemotional. Your actions have to have actual thought, actual testing, actual experience. And this is where you have to put the time in. Everybody wants to come in and get the easy button. Swipe trade, swipe trades, right? It's cool, but you have to understand what a swipe trade is showing you. So you can know, you, you know the difference between a good trade and a bad trade, okay? That's very, very important. All right, so I'm just gonna show, I just wanted to show you guys one of these setups right here of a potential move that we may call out, not now because we know it's Sunday. We don't want to get involved with this as of yet, but this is a potential setup that may look, look may look really good coming up at a London session. So if the team agrees on it, we will drop it. But if not, you probably won't see us release this trade. Just being honest with you guys, because it's real early, and all we're all about making sure you guys have the best possible setups and entries regardless of anything else that's going on. Like, I'm all about making sure you guys stay profitable. Even here, right? Price got into this zone right here. What was our indicator showing us? Arcing to the downside, 
All right. Let's go back even further. See if we can find another one coming back up into our zones. All right. All it look at this. Look at all of these areas right here. We know this zone here is an area that price has to make a decision in, correct? Right up in here, what did price do? Arc to the downside. Price got up in here, arc to the so every time it came towards the top zone, top of our zone here, what we, what, what we waiting on? Arc to the downside. Arc to the downside. Came back up again, arc to the downside. Over and over and over again. Same thing here. We got back into our zone here. Price did what? Came up and arc to the downside. Even though this bad boy made higher highs and higher highs, or higher highs and kind of kept pop, popping up, it kept showing that you can stay in. You can stay in for the sale. It's fine. It'll get back here. You just got to do it a lot of drawdown. And it kept going higher, leveling off, coming back down. Eventually, we finally bottomed out here, and then it pulled to the upside even more so. But this thing literally just up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down the whole way across. And even this kind of move, if we can't find good setups, like after something like this, where we get a nice push to the downside, and I was kind of like bouncing higher and bouncing higher, we can't find the best possible. But this is the thing. All we're looking for is arcs. So we'll find this move. We would have gotten out here. This is a four-hour time frame. We'd have got in here, gotten out here. All of a sudden, another move here where it's arcing, we'd have gotten in here and potentially gotten out here. So we would have left all of this behind us because we didn't have any more arcs to execute. Right? We had our first arc, which we got in, made profit, and all of a sudden, this popped back up. We were already out from here. We took profits already. But now all of this mess is happening. We missed all of that just to find a good setup where we know these moves are the best, right? All the arc. Same thing going down. We want to catch a buy, arc to the upside, potential buy. Arc to the upside, potential buy, right? Real simple. The MACD indicator is very useful because it shows us momentum in the market as well as the cycles in the market, similar to the, to, to the stochastic. Where the stochastic shows you that up and down, up and down, those cycles over and over. This does the same thing, but it gives us that momentum we're looking for. And inside of here, with this histogram line, these little bars you see, this gauge is the strength of almost every candle above it, right? These candles are getting, what, weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. And all of a sudden, you start seeing the candles start to pull higher, stronger, stronger, stronger. It told you price is pulling to the upside again before we even saw all of this happening. All right, it wasn't like it just surprised us. We saw it getting stronger and stronger and stronger as it made a pull to the upside, okay? It gave, it, gave, it gave us literally everything we needed to know. Okay, the cycle shows it's going down, but inside of this cycle, it's making a nice push to the upside. Let's be wary and not just jump in with emotion. Let's, let's trade what we see here. Where, where's my arcing motion? I already got my arcing motion. I can't execute on anything else in here because I don't have enough data, right? I need more information. Now all of a sudden price pulls back up. We got an arcing motion. Now we can make a decision. Took a sale. Let's just say we took a sale even here, like late. We got in really late. It dropped all the way down 134 pips on a late entry just because we saw it arcing to the downside. All right, guys, this, this is the beauty of saying, hey, it's coming back into my zone. It's arcing back down. I could potentially ride this move from the top to the bottom just because I know how powerful these arcs are. All right. Same thing here. Price pulled to the upside. Started ar arcing back down. Boom, hit the top of this, bounce, went even lower. And it arced again, dropped back down. So what we got, down cycle, up cycle, down cycle, up cycle, over and over. And inside of our Discord, we teach you how to really analyze the market and read these, right? You don't have to come in here and just try to figure this out. We break this down for you step by step by step, all right? Now, I'm not going to sit here and just harp on one pair all day. I know that sounds like fun, but we already understand Euro Audit is pretty much in a nice position. We could potentially see a nice push to the downside because we get, we're already seeing our arcing motion take place already. So that's cool. That's great. That's fine and dandy. You know, we're about to make money on that eventually anyway. So now we're going to go to a new pair, which is, I want to do a GBP pair. And this is the thing. I know everybody loves GBP, JPY. Like, that's just, I'm, I'm, I'm sure some of y'all already got, like, shirts that say GBP, JPY is bay. I get it. Like, you make a lot of money from it. That bad boy moves real fast. What's going on, Dwayne? I know you in the shop, man. I got to run into you by, the, by, by before we leave tomorrow, too. I'm going to have to call you when we get done with this. So, 
I'm gonna go ahead and what's going on, Sterling? Thanks see you in here, brother. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up a GJ really quick. I know everybody loves this bad boy. One of my favorites anyway, so I'm not even gonna pump fake like I don't like it. So plain Jane. It. All right, so we're on the daily time frame, right? This bad boy has been moving higher, and look what happened. Started arcing to the downside, this thing ran away. And this is a daily, right? We're looking at potential boom, boom. This is almost 200, almost 300 pips. It's 270 some pips just straight down in the last one, two, three, four days, right? So right now, we have a lot of movement happening right now in the market. But my first thing I'm looking at is this, this, this is what I want you guys to start noticing, like levels like this, where we got the 100 moving average, respecting, respecting, respecting. Finally broke it, and I was testing again here. This was really important when this thing got broken again, because when you start looking left, like I'm just going to drop a line on top of here, and I'm going to clean it up for you as we go. This is cool. This is nice, but it's more to the story than just this. I'm looking at this, and I'm saying, okay, this is cool. This is really nice. This thing is really moving, but I want to look right here. This area right here, makes sense to me because I have an engulf in here and this candle here is in a very convenient spot where price tends to make a lot of decisions right in this middle zone, right? Like this just is a little bit too convenient where this thing right in this area, everything seems to just happen, right? We just dropped this line here and look at everything just seems to be happening in the past and on that level. That's just Real convenient right here. Price gets real, 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 real bouncy like, right? Like every time we get to that zone, price makes a decision. Boom, big candle breaking through. All right, and it kept running. All right, came up, tested these levels, and now what is it doing? Came back to the zone, testing these levels, broke higher, came down. Craziness once it got into the zone. Look at this wicks all over the place. So now we know this zone is a real important level for GBP, JPY. And we're sitting on this level right now on the daily time frame. So I, I honestly, I'm going to leave that right there. I'm not even going to make this even harder than what it has to be. I'm just going to leave that right where it is. No big deal. And now I'm going to look left and see if I can find more engulfings that make sense. Right? Right here would be a good one. But I like this one a little bit more because this is giving me areas like this where price made decisions here as well. And now we have price trapped inside of a zone where it has to make a decision has to because back here price came up to this level respect it respect it and start to bounce around respect it respect it got into the zone broke retested and went higher came back in this zone again went higher and what happened a big candle had to break it and then it came back retested multiple times and ran away from it and now we had an area where it tested it again ran away so now we have price trapped inside of a zone where it has to make a decision somewhere within here, now we can go to our lower time frame. All right. Let's go over. Now we pretty much have an area where what's happening now? Price is in a, at a bottom on a four hour time frame. What are we looking at? Cradling to the upside, potentially showing strength in the GBP pair, pushing to the upside here. We can see price bounce from here and go straight up from this level. Okay, now mind you, we just have the daily where price is already coming down. What is it doing? Testing our 100 moving average. That makes it even more attractive. Now, price is already dipped down so low as it is. And what happened? Remember, I showed you guys back in the day where, or back in the day, back on the other chart on EA, where these lines show the strength in the candles, right? Price was dropping, dropping, dropping. And we started seeing, and you're going to put this here so you can follow where I'm going on with the actual candles. Price was getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And all of a sudden, a little strength came in from here. And now we started seeing price pull higher. We started to strengthen, 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 all the way to this point. But what happens was price didn't truly strengthen. It leveled off. So now when I see price leveling but no real big movement here, that lets me know the moment this thing finally turns around a drop, it's going to be a huge drop because there was no real buying pressure in the market. Okay? So what's happening right now is price is dropping, 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 and now what's happening here we're having more strength come in from this candle, potentially to this candle. This is still active. So I can't give this a lot of credit right now because within this daily, you know, time frame, this could actually push lower than this 
this bar here. So right now we just need more data, have to be patient, let the market breathe. It's only been open for a few hours. So back to that four hour time frame, we have an area here where price is actually starting to starting to pull to the upside now slightly to have to be patient here again. So I said, I can't enter trades today because it's just not enough information. They may look really good. The setups may be all looking profitable and whatnot, but I just want to make sure for my account sake that I'm not jumping in because I feel like I'm missing out on something, right? They call that FOMO trading, fear of missing out. We're chasing the market. These, it's, it's only really three things you got to look out for in the market when you're trading. Fear of missing out where you're just jumping in because you see it moving fast and it's big candles and you feel like you missed a move. So you jump in in the middle of a move and all of a sudden it seems like the moment you get in, the market just turns around the moment you hit buy or sell. Like it was waiting on you and said, oh, Aisha's in. Turn around. Let's go. We got her. Game time. Oh, Dre just jumped in. Oh, you know it's time to go the other way. Angela, I've been waiting on you to make a trade all day. Time to go negative. Right? Dwayne, you, you told me so many stories already, bro. So I already understand the mindset of when you get into these trades. Sometimes we take it personal. Right? We get, <laughs> we get into that mindset. Like, man, I really feel like it's a little dude on the other side of the screen that's just making this market go against me and only me. Right. You, you sometimes you guys joke and say, how about every time Jazir jump in a trade, we're going to take the other side since it's going against him. But I can't call out Jazir. Jazir been making cash on me. man. Every time I talk to him, he's talking about, man, I went nine out of 10, bro. I'm about to go to sleep. So he's being patient right now. So I got I got a hats off to my bro. But for the most part, I want you guys to understand that you just can't get in in the middle of these moves because you feel like you're missing out. Right. If you don't have any structure, you don't have enough data and you're just chasing it, you setting yourself up to lose. Because how many times you guys got in? Like I said, it just goes up and down, up and down. And one minute you're in profit, one minute you're negative. One minute you're in profit, one minute you're negative. And you don't know. Right. I get those phone calls. Hey, Kurt, you want to uh, you want to pray with me right quick, man? I was in this trade, bro. I, I need some prayer right now, bro. <laughs> I'm like, listen, we not Holy Ghost trading over here. This, you got to have some strategy. You can't just be jumping in, calling on Jesus every time you hit buy or sell. Like you got more, more important things to do. And make sure your trading account is going in the negative. So we got to make sure we have absolute tops, absolute bottoms. And this is the beauty of having that Bollinger Band. This is the beauty of using your MACD, understanding that I should be waiting for an arcing move. And my arcing move should be coming off of a Bollinger Band, right? Like if I went ahead and dropped Bollinger Bands on here, you guys would be blown away. Like, man, every time I hit the Bollinger Band, it moved right back to the middle Bollinger Band and back to the top Bollinger Band and back to the middle Bollinger Band and rattled around and dropped to the bottom Bollinger Band, back to the middle Bollinger Band. And all we're doing is just catching those moves, catching those moves, catching those moves because we're patient, right? We're waiting for those cycles to take place and we're just executing, right? And, we're, and the thing is, inside of these movements, we're not emotional. We're not running around excited. We're not running around sad because just, just as fast as you can get excited, you can become sad at the same time. And these emotional highs and lows are what's affecting your money, okay? And inside, inside of this, your risk management goes away because now you're just revenge trading. Oh, man. I'm, you know, I'm asking you guys. Honestly, I really want you guys to really be truthful with me, okay? I know you can't unmute, okay? But just hear me out when I ask you this. And be, be real. Let's say we win six trades in a row, right? All of them, 60 pips or better. So we're looking at almost, you know, triple double in our account in a few trades, right? Marl, I see you over there over walking back and forth making that food. So let's say you win, <laughs> you win six trades in a row, right? Now at that point, what do you do after that six trades? You got, you got another setup coming, right? Arcing to the downside. It's looking real good. How that last size looking? What you about to do now? You can go ahead and type in the chat. I'm, matter of fact, I'm going to pull the chat up because I want to see this. What do you do? <laughs> I see you. I see you, Andrew. Double up. Who else? Who else in the chat? Let me let me see it. See, you got six trades. The seven trade is on the way. How we looking? Go ahead and type in the chat. I just I just need to see that the mindset with everybody. And I want you to be honest. Because Andrew, Andrew was honest with me. He told me he doubling up, right? You you didn't triple double your account already, right? Just see her, go big. Go big or go home, right? I'll probably go ahead and put another one, another trade in. I see you, Quentin. Okay, so now. We're all being honest here. We know that six trade in, six trades in, <laughs> six trades in, we making big money. Seventh trade, now what's up? I'm about to go ahead, I'm about to put the, the standard lot in. I'm going in $50 a pip, ain't that right, Jay Wayne? $50 a pip, baby. So we going in $50 a pip, right? All of a sudden, 
it goes crazy on us, right? Market goes wacky, new, something wild happens, and then boom, it makes a higher high, right? We think we're getting in for the sale, boom, a higher high comes in, right? Out of nowhere, out of nowhere. You just essentially gave away every single profitable trade you made because you were on an emotional high, okay? Your whole week, whole month potentially, gone, gone because of one trade, because you were on an emotional high. This is, this is the whole reason why people say 95% of traders lose money because of emotions. It's not the broker. It's not the market. It's, not, it's, it's you. It's you. The broker already knows you're going to make money and get excited and give it all back. They already know that. It's human nature. They know how we're wired. This is not, this is not a new thing for them. They've been doing this for years. These brokers, ain't, ain't, this, this ain't their first go round. So they understand that they don't have to do anything crazy with the markets. They know that the market's going to move. It's just people going to give it all back because of how they are. So now, same thing. Let's say you lost five trades in a row, right? And you're looking at it like, man, I done lost all these trades. This is a really good setup right here. I really want to take this sale. You know what? I'm going to make it all back on this one. And what do you do now? You double up again. You double up again. Okay, he was up 250 on Wednesday, gave 100 back the same night. I, I, man, I hear you, bro. I, I swear I understand you, right? Greed, exactly, Kevin, exactly. Increase a little bit next week <laughs> on all the trades. I see you, John. As soon as you double up, they're going to flip the script. It's not them. It's not them. It's us, right? It could be any trade. It's not so much that the market did it. It's just you having your human nature creep in, okay? And this is where I tell everybody, if you're on an emotional high, you can give it all away with a with a good with an emotional high from making money. If you're on an emotional low, you can give the rest away because you're trying to revenge trade now. Okay, so your happiness is gonna give them the money, your anger is gonna give them the money. Somewhere in the middle of that sounds like profit to me. Somewhere in the middle of that sounds like a whole lot of money that can be made. So this is where you have to stay even keeled within everything, even inside the losses, even inside the wins. All of it has to be emotionless. Okay. That's, 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 that's really one of the hardest steps to really master is mastering your own emotion. Because trading will tell you who you are as a person. If you want to ride the lightning, you a thrill seeker, your trading account going to reflect that. All right? If you're impatient and you don't want to wait for the setups to take place, you just want to get in, your trading account is going to reflect that. If you want to take every single little movement in the market and you just in and out, in and out, in and out, paying all these fees, but you just want to be active in the market, your trading account is going to reflect that. But if you're patient and you wait for the most profitable setups, you wait for all the good moves in the market, you wait for the dominant energy to come in on your side and your favor, now you have that opportunity to consistently make money over and over and over because now the market's easy for you. It can become boring because all you're doing is working your system, right? And we all know what system stands for. Save yourself time, energy, and money. Bam, system. Don't, over, don't overthink it. Don't try to complicate it. Just keep it simple. That's it. That's all. So revenge trading, don't do it. FOMO, fear of missing out, hurry up and jumping in, chase the market. Don't do it. And it's this thing called the gambler's fallacy where <laughs> you get into the market and you tell yourself, my strategy is so good. All I have to do is make a whole lot of money and then I can take a real big lot. And then if I lose it, I'll just work my way back up doing it the, the first way where you end up stuck in this area where you make money and then you break even. You make money, then you break even. You make money, then you break even. And <laughs> you never, ever get ahead because you're always trying to outwit the market with your, with your profits that you made as opposed to just work the system. Work the system. That's why I tell people, once you get profitable, it becomes boring. But boring is good. You should welcome boring to your, your trading because now you just have consistency now. Consistency is what you want. Okay? So... I just want to make sure we kind of harped on that a little bit, but I wanted to show you how powerful this is where you see here, the market was at a high, hit one of our zones, and what did this do? Curve, arcing to the downside, and now what did it do? Came back down, test another one of our levels here, and what is it doing now? Curving, potentially moving to the upside. So now we see price moving, but guess what? Inside of all of these moves, we had our best entry right here, and you see what my cursor is, right? Did price ever come back up to that high, like literally to this peak? After it dropped down, 
So now we know we got the best setup out of all of this noise, right? And now guess what happened? Right here, what, was, what were these candles doing? Making strong lows, right? Strong lows. So this is a high. This is a low. This is a low. This is a high. That looked like divergence to me, right? These candles had a lot of down power in them. And all of a sudden, pulling to the upside, a little more downing, and then back up. High, low, low, high. Makes sense to me, right? Just I'm I'm just saying. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. So understanding that we can see a nice push up GBP JPY. I'm gonna leave that there. So we've done Euro odd, right? Potential push to the downside. GBP, potential push to the upside. So all of this looks pretty simple, right? Like, man, this is really easy. I could do this in my sleep. Well, let's just say if this is a little harder for you and you see yourself needing a little more help. Some of this stuff is just a little bit too difficult. I want to make sure I show you guys something that anybody can use. It's nothing confusing about it. You literally just log into this bad boy, load your indicators on here, and you use the tools. Real simple. I'm talking about real simple. What is this pair right here? Let's see. <laughs> That's funny. We're looking at Euro odd. On a 15 minute time frame, right? We do, we do we not just talk about you're all doing what? Curving to the upside, right? And what does the harmonic scanner have for us? You're all for a buy on a 15 minute time frame right now, right? That's is that is that convenient or does that just make sense? This is why I said it gets it gets very boring because you understand what's happening and now you're just consistently being patient and taking the right side of the market. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna actually add an indicator on here for you guys. I'm gonna put the MACD on here because we were just using that. Let me move this out the way again. It's like all over the place. Okay. Yeah, we're good with that. I ain't even gonna change the settings. Remember I told you guys this thing cycles up and down, the bars getting stronger and weaker. Price right now is below that. My, my signal bar is below. My candles want to do what? Cradle it and pull it back to the upside. Harmonic scanner is already telling me this is potentially ready to go to the upside. So now everything that I'm a little confused on, IML's tools just cleared that up for me. Okay. Brand new person has no idea what's going on in the market. Kurt just said a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo real fast, and none of that made sense. <laughs> but I went to the harmonic scanner and it was like, Boom, there you go. Potential opportunity for a buy right here. I can't I can't make this stuff up. I'm just I just want you guys to really understand. And it still hasn't even hit our entry point zone yet. Right? It got close here, but it never actually hit the entry point. So <clears throat> if you took this trade, this trade is still valid because this wick never touched our green line where our entry point was. So whatever Jay Wayne is eating, I want some of that. But at the same time, I want you guys to understand <laughs> that the harmonic scanner. Is one of those tools where if you're brand new, this is your trading assistant. This allows you to come into the market and have that confidence that you haven't really built yet through experience. Okay. You're leveraging everything now. You're leveraging the products, you're leveraging the team, you're leveraging every single thing you can find. And listen, if you don't know what leverage is, I strongly suggest you make leverage a regular word in your day. Like leverage for me changed my life. Understanding leverage is everything. That's just why we make to make money in the, in, the, in the market. Our brokers offer us leverage, right? But only not only that, you can leverage my efforts. You can leverage Jay Wayne's efforts. You can leverage Justin Ford's efforts. You can leverage Joe Junts's efforts, right? The people in the team that are winning, reach out, communicate. This is a community. We're not doing this just to say, hey, I got a couple signups today. It's like, hey, my team just made some money today. Like my people are eating. I am excited. I can make money. I can trade by myself, y'all. I can sit in my room, close my door, trade all day, make all the money I want to make and be done with it. But I want to see my people eating, right? I want to make sure everybody on this, on this chat has opportunity to make money, can have opportunity to learn this skill set and share with their loved ones, teach their kids, teach their spouse, right? This isn't just about Kurt. This ain't just about team take profits. This is, this is breaking generational curses. Okay, it was powerful in my life. I want to be powerful in your life. So 
understanding that these tools that IML has aren't just something to be slept on, right? I mean, we can go to JAFX, let's say hour, four hour charts. And I mean, they just load up, right? Euro NZD, Audi JPY. Let's check out Audi JPY on hour. Already starting to move to the upside, right? If I went back to my chart here, let's just say, you know what, I'm going to pull up Audi JPY just, just because I want to just prove a point. All right, I'm just I'm feeling saucy right now, so I'm just going <laughs> I'm just going to prove a point real quick. All right, four hour and plain Jane it. All right, nothing, nothing special, real simple. What what does that look like to you? What did we just talk about? Doing what? Curving to the upside, bouncing off of the 100 moving average. I didn't have to slap anything extra on this chart. And the harmonic scanner said, hey, you want to make some money? Come on over here. We're about to go for a buy. It took everything I just, it took an hour to explain. He was said, 10 seconds, buy. <laughs> like, I, I can't, I, I can't make this stuff up, people. So if you're brand new, you have no idea what you're doing, log into the products and take full advantage of what we're showing you guys, right? Like, this isn't hard. You just have to plug in, right? I've seen people make more excuses about not plugging in. Then the, then the product's not working for them. You're like, oh, man, the swipe trades, man, they they, they hit and they miss. My lot sizes is all over the place. I don't understand it, bro. I just, oh, these swipes, man, these swipes. And I'm like, I get more complaints about people taking other people's trades than saying I'm confused. I need to learn. Right? Let's, let's, let's get less dependent and more accountable. Okay? Let's take a swipe trade and say, you know what? I like the idea. Thanks for the suggestion but that trade needs more time. Or, you know what? That is a really good trade. That entry point is on point. Let me go ahead and jump in and actually take this trade, okay? It's, it's all about understanding. I mean, copying and pasting is great, but here on this team, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't recommend anybody on this team just blindly follow anybody. I don't want you to blindly follow me. If, you, if I say something and it don't make sense, I want you to call me out immediately. Because my whole thing is, I, I'm like a daisy. I'm a, I am a student always. <laughs> I am not too big to be corrected. So this is what it's all about, guys. We're just helping each other grow and build and learn and advance. Because I'm talking mentorship. I'm talking progress. I'm talking growth. I'm talking becoming. I'm talking making a dent in life, right? We work these jobs. We go to these classes. We get all this debt. We got all these bills. We have life in front of us every day. And it's like we find a reason to make another excuse. We find a reason to do another thing we ain't got no business doing. We find a reason to spend more money on stuff that's not benefiting us, right? Most of the time, we spend money on stuff just to pacify us from feeling, feeling bad about our environment. Man, I live in this area. Man, I can't stand Detroit. Man, I'm so tired of this. Oh, my family get on my nerve. Let me go out and buy me some Jordans, <laughs> right? Oh, man, my wife get on my nerves. Oh, my boyfriend's so stupid. Oh, my God, this car is always breaking down. Oh, let me go get my nails done. <laughs> it's, 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 it's wild the things we do and it doesn't make sense I'm feeling some kind of way everybody get to eat right Aisha eating Jay Wayne eating like I'm, I'm like Marla over there cooking something I don't even know if Angela just came back from picking up some food I saw her driving I'm like man I gotta get my grub but I know Amos eating because it's his camera off so I just wanna I just wanna harp on the fact that guys we're all in this together so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually segue in and let my boy Jay Wayne jump in and do some things. I don't want to unmute him. I see him over there going in on his on his video. He over there. He, Jay Wayne is a branding machine. It's so funny too, because like in the beginning, his whole model was, "Hey y'all, I, I just want to trade. I don't even want to make a team. I just I just want to trade." And then, then you look at him like four months later, he platinum one thousand, right? <laughs> Mister Mister, I just want to trade is P one thousand right now. So I'm um I'm gonna unmute him for a second. I don't want I don't want to catch him in mid branding, but I do want to. Make sure he has a chance to speak because this dude got tons of value. And I want to make sure you guys really understand what we're doing here as a team. All right. And I mean, I know I'm going back and forth with like, you know, members and non-members, but I want to make sure even the people you guys bring in to trade and get paid have full interaction with us. Because I notice a lot of times you guys get added to the chat and, you know, you're just seeing posts for profits and you're seeing people get welcomed and all of that. But you want some value, too. Right. You want to sign up, but you need more information. 
So we're looking at it like, well, you know what? Let's give you some information. Let's give you some value, right? Just because you're on the outside doesn't mean you can't learn. So let's bring some value to the table, show you a couple of the project products and show you how these bad boys work. I mean, I just flip back and forth from harmonic scanner, right? Back to the chart. And I told you what we're looking for. Boom. Great setup, right? Everything's looking good. Great trade for a potential buy. Scanner called it. Not hard. Told you the entry was here. It's already moving to the upside. Got all the take profits lined up for you to go. I mean, I can't, I can't make this stuff up. As, as, as skilled as I am, as skilled as the team is, the, the company's lining everything up for you right then and there. You just got to plug in, start applying it. Honestly, they, we even went the story with my, uh, with my man, Tim Holloman, right? Started off when the count it was like 15, 1500 came in with like literally $1,500, turned it into a million dollars in his first year. He well over a million. Now, I think he said he's somewhere in like $12 million mark just from trading, just from trading. Like, come on. And the only tool he was using was the scanner. He didn't use swipes. He didn't use the web. And like he stayed on the scanner every single day, finding the best setups and just taking them. And he said, all he said, his strategy, he said, all I did was I got in and I got out that TP1. I got in. I got out that TP1. I didn't want TP2 and 3. I didn't want to be in the market that long. I got in, got out that TP1. That was it. I took all the hour trades I could take. I didn't take the four hours. I didn't take the 15 minutes. I got in every hour trade that popped up. TP1, I got in at, at the entry, got out at TP1. A million dollars later, I'm like, bro, come on, dude. That's, it's got to be more to the story. It's got to be more glamorous than that. He's like, bro, I'm telling you what happened. You don't have to believe me, but I'm telling you. I, I wish I could put a, you know, a cherry on top and put some, wrap some Christmas lights around it, but that's what happened. It wasn't nothing extra to it. So in my eyes, I'm looking at it like, how many excuses are you willing to make before, before you go? Or how angry do you have to be before you decide to just say, you know what? I'm done making excuses. I'm done telling myself tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. I'm done doing that. How long does that take for you to start actually making this a part of your morning, right? You get up, find those movements, use your tools and say, you know what? This is not a good trade. This needs more time. You know what? Oh, this is really a good one. I'm going to take this and I'm going to get her that TP1 because guess what? I'm not emotional. I don't care about TP2 and 3. I want consistency. All right? I don't care about all the greed, all the glamour of TP3. Because what you don't know is TP1 is what? Let's say TP1 is like 80% accurate, right? You're going to hit TP1 80% of the time. And then TP2 is what? 40%, right? It went from 80 to 40, halved, right? 40% now with TP2. Now all of a sudden, you're looking at 20% for TP3. And potentially, if it doesn't hit TP3, guess what happens? Comes all the way back and smack your stop loss. And now who you mad at? IML, <laughs> you mad at the broker? You mad? You mad at that? At, you mad at, at Trump because he said something crazy on the news and shot price the other way? You could have been got out the market. Nobody told you to stay in. Nobody held. Nobody held a knife to your to your, to your back. They said it's all on you. Risk management is all on you. What you want to do? Risk to reward, right? Little bit of risk, lot of reward. That's all we're here to do. That's all we're here to do. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute my boy Jay Wayne real quick. I'm going to see if he can hear me. Or he might stay muted. Let me see. Hey, yo, Jay. Can you hear me, bro? Oh, he's still talking. <laughs> he and his... <laughs> he, he branded like crazy. He don't hear nothing I'm saying. He done muted me, everything else. <laughs> yeah can you hear me bro yeah i can hear you what's up man yeah i'm gonna go ahead and let you uh take over real quick bro so you can drop a couple nuggets every in here before we go ahead and like shut it all down but i wanted to make sure everybody had a, a chance to hear you and you know get a little bit of value from you as well man before we uh before we went ahead and shut it out shut it down. i don't want to be on too long because i want people to be able to watch it and get a lot of value out of it and we won't have yeah. like a three hour you know they looking back and forth like bro yeah. <laughs> i, I want to get a nap i feel you so yeah, I'm gonna um, go ahead and jump in. I got a pair that I want to show the people um, what I'm looking at. Um, I got Facebook Live on right now. What's up, family? Uh, they just checking out the behind the scenes or whatever. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and let you do your thing. I'm gonna cut this heat down in this hotel. They got it on cremate in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, let me share my screen with the team. So, Really, the main thing 
let me go over to uh, let me see. I really want to go over to uh trade uh trade and view um right here. Uh let me ask a question, guys. Uh is this is this helpful? Is is doing this zoom helpful real quick? Uh maybe you can comment like what comment some while I'm talking, uh comment how we can make this thing better for you guys because it's not for us. Because we can just go ahead and you know shut it down and just trade on our own and just get paid, you know what I'm saying? Trade and get paid. So, but how how can we um, make this platform better for you guys? How can we explain it or go over something a certain way for you guys, um, you know what I mean? So doing this, so um, just let, let me know or whatever. So the first thing I wanna show you is um, uh, GBP CAD. Is, if there's any pairs left out that we, you want us to cover, uh, please, uh, hey, Kurt, uh, take a note of the comments and, you know what I'm saying, write them down or screenshot them or whatever so we can uh, make this uh, platform uh, better and perfect for the people. Yes, sir. Um, so GBP, CAD, we looking at. What I like about this pair is I'm on the daily right now. I always start at the daily. We know that. Um, what I like is this. So basically, we was on the uptrend. Let me pull out who was on the uptrend right see that the first thing is if you on a daily and you new to trading you like you like um where do i start what do i look at just use your basics right i pull out a, a trend line and i know this was like weeks and months and months ago but it was on the uptrend though we see that and finally, and we want to, we want to talk, talk yourself through the trade, talk yourself through what happened. And so we see it on this trend line bouncing, it bounced off of it, came up a little bit more, right? And it bounced off again. And look at this though. This is what I'm taking note of how these big candles shot out from this area, this big, large green candle shot out from this area. So um, I think I want to mark that up. You know, I want to I want to take note of that area right here. So I'm going to mark it up and you see how price came down. Now, the the trend the, the buy was over once the trend line got broke. You see that trend broke right here? But what did it do after? It it came back and tested. So now I'm going to go ahead and draw a line up here where it tested, where it broke it and tested. Okay, so now I got a little zone right here. Also, um, I'm looking at these engulfing candles. So I'm seeing, I'm seeing this one got engulfed. So I'm in a nice little area right here. I'm in a nice little area, little, little zone area right up in here. Uh, you can even go as up to here. Right where it tested at, right up in here. Um, so... It's consolidating right now, and all we're waiting for is this. Are you gonna? It, it tried to come. It tried to come below, right, right here. Didn't have much success. Came back inside the zone. Are we gonna break out? Are we gonna break out? And if it does break out, what do we? What do we do, guys? If it break out. What are, we, what are we looking for? Do we buy as soon as it break out? No, because if you was going to buy, you were supposed to be buying right here. And the reason why I like this, though, is because this was a demand zone, how this thing shot out. You see that big candle? I want to say, hey, this is, this is a nice little zone right here, like a demand, because it's at the bottom, right? And a supply zone up here. It may, it may go back up. It may buy. And this is the daily. So if you bought here... And, and caught it up in this zone, that's pretty good. But if it break out, we want it to break out and then retest, okay? That's the answer, we want it to retest. Boom, right there. This is the daily. And then we wanna catch it going up. We wanna catch it going up. If it decides to drop off and it close, and, it, and you know, a nice engulfing candle, and, it's, and it sells, we are, 
I could show you that we are already on the um on a uh, sell, seller's market now. I think I believe we're on a seller's market on this. Uh, let me see, moving average. I'm gonna do a hundred. Switch over to J. Um, switch over to the MetaTrader Four. GBP cat. Boom. Okay, here we go. So this is the same thing. I drew the trend line up. It closed below it and it tests back up. You can just see it. You can see it probably better here on this black chart. It tested, retested that little zone area that it broke. And it's consolidating. So we're waiting, guys. We're waiting on GBP CAD for the overall move. We we have to wait because we have we don't have no confirmation yet. We want to see if it break below this level. You know, now there there is smaller trades if you go down to the 30 minute and the four hour. But first, I just want to show you real quick on GBP CAD that we just waiting on this one. Um, you go down to the four hour. Trend line still there. You see the consolidation? You see that? And I ain't got to draw the line down there because it's already there. So it's consolidating. We, we trying to wait for it to break these zones that we set on the daily. Okay. We just trying to wait. We got to be patient. So um that's what's going on 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 that one if this one pops off actually guys this is a pair that i'm looking at throughout the week so if this one pops off if it break a level i'll call that trade out and um and, and curtis for the ones that's on your team curtis will call that trade out for you guys but we waiting on this one what's uh gbp usd we see this uh in the buyer's market pushing up Look at these uh, double tops up here, double top. The reason why this broke down is because it's in a supply zone. Look at this. It's in a supply zone. So when the price came up here, look at this big candle engulfed that and shot, excuse me, and shot down. So, and then it consolidated and then it worked its way back up to this zone. This is the daily, back up to the zone. And when it came back up here, what did it do? Dropped off. Make make notes of this, guys. This is a uh, so now this is this is, this zone is not fresh anymore. So if it ever come back up here, I mean it might not even come back up here. It might come back to this level right here and drop off. Right up in here. So we're at this uh, tip of this line right here. We're at the tip of the uh, the hundred moving average. So what are we waiting for? We want to see if it closed. I, the reason why I got this line right here is because price was um, consolidating in its zone area. Uh, price came down and, and stopped right here. So we want to see what is it going to do. Uh, let's go down to the four hour. Okay, the four hour is in the seller's market. Look at that big, nice engulfing candle. Mark it up. Mark it up. Watch this. We got a, a support uh resistance zone right here this was a floor see this level right here this was a floor it broke through start testing it didn't really have no much success breaking through finally broke through it okay and now we back down here again see all i'm doing is just marking on my zones and i'm getting ready i'm getting ready so this is what you should do, guys. I'm gonna screenshot this and I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna screenshot this and I'm gonna put it in the uh, in the in the uh, trade and get paid group. All right, screenshot done. All right, and so mark these zones up on these numbers uh, when you get the screenshot, and this is gonna be valid for you when you get it. Uh, we want to see. I'm thinking that it's gonna end up hitting back this 100 moving average, and it's gonna keep selling. I don't know for sure. Go That's ahead. Potential head and shoulders right there too. Um, you got the head right here. Oh, the old thing over here, here, shoulder. Yeah, head, shoulder, shoulder. No head. I mean, that shoulder right there, and then the new the head is the top. And then when that when it finally comes back up to test that level all the way over to the right, 
that last high. So all we going to do is cut that head off, right? Yep. Eventually he's going to come back up, test those low. Because you can see he's just engulfing it's all at that where, level. Where would you say Where would you say to cut the head off? Right by right here? You can put it, You can put that boy straight horizontal. I mean, <laughs> straight, straight, straight here. Like, it's like literally straight across. You see just engulfing it's all through that level, bro. Like, dude, they're everywhere over there. Yep. You can keep going so, up. So we um we saying that hey this the head right here right yep and yep. Uh, we saying this the, this the shoulder we're yep. waiting for mm -hmm. the shoulder to form yeah that <laughs> yep. trapped it nicely hit that boy right here yep game time drop off game time drop off something similar probably to this yep. so all we all we want is really just a piece of it give us a piece of it. Give us, give us 50 pips of it, whatever, you know what I'm saying? But the thing of it is, is that we don't want to come in here um, thinking that we got this thing perfectly trapped. We want to kind of have it set up and then just become reactive to it. If it end up breaking this level, then we'll switch our mindset and go for, you know, look for buys. You know what I mean? But right now it's looking pretty good, though. Let me, uh, let me screenshot that, though. I should put a line. I'm going to put a line right there. Guys, would it would it be helpful if I um drop these these screenshots into the into the uh, trading get paid? Is everybody in the trading get paid? We should put that bad boy in the Discord. Oh, in Discord, yeah, 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 for sure. So I took the screenshot and yeah. you just mark and watch these levels. Um, so watch this though. Watch this. So I want to go. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Mega template on them. I went Optimus Prime on them real quick. Look at that. Oh my God. Man, this make me want to this so good, but I gotta wait though. I gotta be patient because you Curtis said, like, not just Curtis though, it's just the standard of a millionaire, a six-figure trader mindset is that we have to be rule-based traders. What is part of your rules? Or do you only trade the London session? Um, are you gonna take a trade on Sunday? You know, rule-based. All right, so one of the things is though, but this looks so good. Do you I have to as Dre say, that's barbecue chicken right there. That look good. Yeah. Like, like this look good in the muck. So look, real quick. I mean, I hate to pull out all these indicators on for new people, but let, let me just be patient and let me just explain this one time for you. This boy dropped, rode the Bollinger band. This boy is oversold. This boy is oversold. Okay. Look at the MACD down here. You see how they all coming up inside that red line? Do you see how this, this red candle closed? Am I zoomed in enough? You see how that red candle closed inside? Inside, opened and closed inside. Now you got green candles coming up. Aren't these dots, if you know my 30 minute crossover, aren't these dots almost done to the end? It's almost to the end. So this is a this could be a perfect time to take a bite. You know, I'm not telling you guys to take a bite, but I'm just saying this is how we look at these trades through the week. Boom. Let me draw it up. I gotta draw this up and I'm gonna post this in uh Discord as well. That's tempting. That's I'm oh man. We're gonna and this and this is where we ride it to. The first one we if you we we was honestly we were supposed to get in on that green one close so we can be already in it. And we're going to ride it to that green, that green uh, moving average. That's be TP1, TP2, the middle, and all you do is mark it. <laughs> Barbecue chicken, baby. TP1. Right there. I'm going to make them green for you. TP1. Then grab that TP2 up there. And then and then look at this. Hold up, though. When you in this buy, all you do is move that stop loss up. If you want to keep going to the moon, we're going we gonna to go to the moon, too. And, and we're going to keep moving that stop loss up. When it gets to TP2, move that stop loss up. And whenever it, if it keep going up to TP3, uh, at least the moving average, the 100 moving average, move that stop loss up. And when it finally stop you out, you done. You done. But I'm telling you, soon, soon, uh, this this uh this dot finna flip, this dot gonna flip, and when that dot flip, you can just stay in that trade, and we on a four hour, you know. 
So that's how we take these trash. Look at that boy oversold, and boom. But I ain't, you know what I'm saying? I know everybody ain't. And you know, I used to know how many pips we talking. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to go back down to the simple template. And uh, so that's how I roll, y'all. Get y'all templates together so y'all can, you know, bounce back and forth. See it simple, mark it up, and then flip to that mega template or whatever your indicators is to confirm it. You feel me? I've been so, noticing, too, a lot of the GBP pairs are all in position to go to the upside, too. Like, like almost all of them. I've been, like, watching them, too. It's crazy. GBPR, GBP NZD, they all ready to go to the upside. So, yep. it's a good sign. So, um... Yeah, that's, so that was my two pairs, but uh, that's what I really want to talk about. So on GBP CAD, we basically just, we want to wait. This is kind of kind of consolidating. I didn't feed her tonight. This kind of consolidating. Like, wouldn't you say, though, on this one? We got to wait on this one, Kurt? Yeah. Yeah, because even now, like, it's been giving you some sideways movement. If it was going to make a big push, it, pretty, it potentially would have already done it. But I do like the fact that it has an exhaustion wick on that previous candle, and it's pushing up now on that on that active candle so yeah. it could definitely see a nice push to the upside before we get anything down this is on a uh this is a daily too so yeah you can go to the four hour and definitely see what it's doing so, but see what i like though is because it's the daily so you go on a four hour like you're saying what i what i was gonna say was oh yeah uh, make it a little bit smaller how you got this little floor over here mm-hmm you got that that little, I mean, not the floor, but that resistance level up in here. Yeah. Because uh, my people on Facebook, I'm going to break it down. Like, you got price keep coming up, couldn't really, you know, break past it, break out of it. Kind of broke out of it, went back down. Now it's, it's you know, just keep hitting. Yep. Boom. Look how it's hitting that, trapped on that uh, trend line. Finally, it broke out. Now move forward all the way through here. We back to that level again. See that? Yeah. Back to that level again. And you see that big, long, green wick. Man, you know. So, like you say, back to the upside on this one. Because it, uh, what, what, what the reason why I brought it up was because it, if it's a floor, now it's looking like it's hitting a support zone now. Because clearly it broke through that level. All of this. Now we back down. I mean, we, we kind of waiting a little bit, right? But... It's, it's, it's nice because it's hitting that, that support zone right here. So you can get something out of this, but we want to see how it's going to react to this. Um, to this, uh, The reason why it's not really time to get in it for one is Sunday, and the next reason why is because it's if you was going to get into this trade, you should have already been in it. You should have already been in it. So we got to wait now. We got to wait for a better entry. And GBP USD, we already went over that one. Yeah. Did he, did we go over GPP GPP all? Somebody said GPP all. Did you go over that one, Kurt? Uh no, nah, we went over uh I believe it was. Let me let me go back and check. I do want you to go back to your GBP cab for a second though. Yeah, let's look at it. I wanted to uh, show people something on this. It's like a quick little like heads up. What I want you to do is find that that top or before it, when the, when a downtrend started, that very top of that downtrend that we in right now. Right here. No, no, right all here. Way, all the way back. All the way back to the, the beginning. Oh, of the right first. here. Like, like zoom out just a little. Oh, let bit. me go out a little bit. Yeah. There you go up there. Do me a favor and draw a trend line from that all the way to that that second wick. Just wick the wick. Uh, what do you mean? That 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 big wick right there. Right here. Yeah, and make and make a ray go straight through. I just want them to see how powerful the trend lines are. Look at that. Look at that. What is Price doing right now? Respecting that boy, hitting that boy. Oh, my God. Look at that. I can't make this stuff up. So. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's sitting I mean, right, it hit right on that. First, it was underneath the respect, and it finally broke through. Now, it's respecting it on the top side. And this is what I'm saying. Like, I mean, I, I've seen this stuff so for so long now, so I know, like, when you see structure like that, it's, it's showing you levels. that you, All you got to do is just let the market show you structure. It's structure all over the place. You have to train your eyes to see it. Yeah. So this this is beautiful, man. And then it pulled back on you. It pulled back for you to get in. Yep. Twist it right here. Boom. Yep. So now you got that bottom level of support, and you got that trend line. 
Now you see that room right here? That, that big, <laughs> Trey said it's so tempting he got to turn away. <laughs> that that ain't that ain't golf. You see how it's kind of it's kind of like weird how it's placed against that red candle. That's just because the day opened. Yeah. And they opened it gapped or whatever. So that's why it's looking like that. Yeah, that's all that is. But yeah. But so we pushing. So what we, what we can do is wait for boom and go up. Probably sit around this 100 moving average. It's gonna probably come back down and test this. If it tested in, in, in another engulfing to the upside, we could take that. Potentially, yeah. Potentially, you know, if it break if it break through. So I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna I'm gonna screenshot this. Let me screen. Let me take this one off. I'm gonna take this one off. And and guys on Facebook, um, we have a Discord group that if you were part of the team, you can get these trades. You know, you can get these call outs that we putting out, but I'm a I'm a screenshot this and we're gonna drop that in there. All right, screenshot done. And uh we just wait for it and you guys can mark it up as well. So um did we did you go you said you went over GBP all or is that it, Kurt? You was talking about on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can we can potentially end it here. I just wanna kinda go over uh yeah. one more thing. And then after that, we can go ahead and wrap it up and then give everybody time to kind of go back and do some back testing and check out some charts and have some fun with it. What I, on The last thing I really want to talk about is just the news. Like, I understand a lot of times we get so caught up with just, you know, getting in and marking up the chart, jumping in and wanting to make all this money. But for the most part, there's so much more going on, you know, in the market. You got to make sure you, you you getting a full picture. Like, if you're not... Right, guys, about to end it. It's about to be 10 o'clock. Got to get make sure the family good in bed. Um, I'm going to finish this Zoom with the team and um, sh uh, share them, share the trades with them. Uh -huh. But um, I appreciate y'all for tuning on. Got some more here. Um, appreciate y'all for tuning on. Um, this is going to be a beautiful uh, week, and we're going to make a lot of money this week uh, with the help of the Lord. So if you guys, you know, some of you people um, that's on here, I did try to reach out to you and, you know, help you guys get the training or whatever. I mean, get the trading forex. So you know, what I'm saying, just think about it. If you really want to take your uh, have financial freedom and become, you know, financial uh, uh, financially free, you know, reach out to me. You know, I love to help you. So um, don't forget to like this video, share it with somebody that you think is interested in changing their life. Um, and uh, I'll check you guys later. Let's make this money, baby. Peace. He always branded. He always branded. He ain't even muted, so he wanted y'all to get all of that. <laughs> so let me go ahead and do that right quick. So I want to make sure I show you guys this this website. If you haven't got on Forex Factory yet, you haven't jumped on, and you haven't really in, in like really just kind of got an understanding of how the website works, I just want to go through a real quick, you know, example of what happens on this website. So Forex Factory is basically just a way for you to come on and see exactly what when big news updates are coming out for the week. So like right now it's Sunday. There are like three news updates for the for the day. Two of them already happened. One's going on at 11, NZD, credit card spending on a year. Not a big deal. So some of these like yellow ones are low impact, orange are medium impact, and then red is high impact, meaning it has a very volatile a very big chance to have some volatility on the market. So what I like to do is I'll go to the calendar tab so I can see all of this. And then I'll go over to the actual filter and I'll cut off the low impact news. So that way I'm getting just all the things that I need to see. Okay, so I know now Monday, potentially when the London session starts up at 3 a.m., I'm going to get all of this Euro news. And then, you know, leading into the next day, 3.30 p.m., you know, Canadian news, Bank of Canada, uh, the governor, you know, Polo speaks or whatever. So. You know, Australian dollar is going to have some RBA, the uh, Reserve Bank of Australia, Assistant Governor Kent's going to do a speech, and Australia is having CPI. This is big news. CPI is always big news. That's Consumer Price Index. That just shows how much money was being spent in the economy. So if a lot of money is being spent, it shows the economy strong, people are willing to spend money, if businesses are making money, it makes the economy look really good. They're, that means their currency will have an uptick if it's a high CPI, Okay. Uh, and it just goes through like this. So what I like to do is I like to have these kind of updates written down so I know what time to look out for the Australian dollar to do something crazy or the U.S. dollar is going to have a CB consumer confidence. So 
different things like this are going to help me stay on the right side of my trades. If I'm just jumping in the market and I don't have enough information, I'm going to run into a problem. Even here it says New Zealand dollar bank holiday, Australia bank holiday, Euro Italian bank holiday. Okay. All day long. So now I know I may not see a lot of volatility from NZD or, or Euro on these days, right? Tuesday leading into Wednesday. I may not see a lot of volatility from me. So gives me a heads up. So these are the things you want to kind of keep your eye on when you're setting up certain pairs to trade. Okay. Just real simple, nothing complicated. You just want to come through here, pick the pairs that you trade, because what I want you guys to do is find two pairs that you like to trade and only focus on those two. Part of the problem is you guys want to trade every single thing in the market and that's not realistic and that's not sustainable either. Okay. I get they're moving all over the place, but find two pairs that speak to you, master them, learn them, apply what you need to apply with the strategies and the mindset and just master those two pairs. That's it. Once you do that, everything else starts to open up because now if you decide, you know what, I pretty much understand how USD JPY moves. Let me go check out GBP USD now because now I can make more money inside of this pair. Okay. So certain things that we do, it has to make sense. We can't just, we can't just do certain things that are just like busy work. I swear if I watch one more person on this thing, eat Blair, I'm going to find you, bro. I'm hungry. <laughs> so what's happening is I want to make sure you good, bro. I'm just messing with you. So you want to make sure that when you, when you have your pairs, you come in here and you look at the different news updates that are coming out for your pairs so you stay on the right side of it if you're trading something like gbp you know jpy this euro news won't truly affect you this us dollar news won't truly affect you right but now this jpy news will if you're if you're trading gbp jpy all right this is gonna be this is a big deal now because now you got to pay attention so just certain little small things that you can do to keep yourself on the right side of the market also harmonic scanner take full advantage of this tool don't just let it sit by the wayside and don't use it like Really, really go in, dive in, and get immersed, right? I mean, like, worst case scenario, you learn something. Oh, God, please, I'm, I've, I've been educated. Whatever shall I do? So that's all I really wanted to kind of just go, on, go over the last little bit of that, just making sure you guys understand. Use Forex Factory. Pick two pairs that you want to trade. Mark up the pairs that are actually listed that inside of your two pairs. So now you can actually have an educated understanding of what's going on and, and we'll have an actual over, overview of the news updates and you write them down in your notebook or your whiteboard, whatever you have, your trading journal, please make a trading journal, write down your trades. It helps you. So if you have a losing trade, you understand why you lost, what time of day did you lose? What pair did you lose with? What was your lot size? All these different things will help you start to refine your thought process and your strategy, okay? Just because I trade a certain way, Jay Wayne trades a certain way, doesn't mean you have to just blindly follow us. All we're saying is we're just giving you guys a base to grow from, okay? Something that's just consistent because we know in the market, you need different tools, right? The market shifts gears on you. You can't just trade the same way all the time. And we need to know when it's time to just really sit back and let the market breathe so now you can find a better position. Okay, think about a sniper, right? When a sniper is about to shoot his shot, he takes hours, if not days, of preparation just to get in position for the shot. Okay, you don't just show up and shoot the gun and walk away, it's preparation. So, my thing, my question to you guys is what's more important, the preparation or him pulling the trigger? Okay, okay, that prep. Okay, because without the prep, he can't, he can't get in position. He doesn't know what to expect. He doesn't, he hasn't accounted for any variables. And on top of that, this is another thing too. Once he shoots the shot, what's more important? The preparation, the shot, or the exit? Because he still got to get out of there. He still, <laughs> still got to find his way out. You got to have an exit strategy. So preparation for the trade, entering the trade, and exiting the trade, right? Got to make sure you have all those different, those different aspects of the trade thought out. This is the beauty of that trading journal because now you have all those different ideas and those things listed of why a, a trade went well or why a trade went bad. Okay. This isn't the game. Like we're taking this thing 100% serious. One of my mentors said, if you treat it like a hobby, they will pay you like a hobby. And last time I checked hobbies cost you money. So if you're losing, there you go. That answers that question. So treat it like a business. It'll pay you like a business, write things down, be held accountable. 
understand that this is not for play play. We serious right now. This is all about taking that next step mentally. And we're trying to be held accountable for everything. Because I'm the type of person, I want everything to be my fault, period. Because I know if it's my fault, I can fix it. I don't know if that's a control thing or a guy thing or whatever it may be, but I just feel like if I can, if it's something I can do in my power, I want to be able to do that. I don't want to look around and say, this is all, oh, I didn't make the money because of Jay or Amos. Or no, no it, was, it was me. It was me. I did it. All right. End of the day, I want to make sure that I'm doing everything in my power that I can do to benefit myself and my family. I'm doing it. Period. No excuses. No days off. Period. They asked Tom Brady. How does he stay ahead of everybody else in the league? How how does he remain at the level that he's at? And all he, he just said one word. No, he said he said three words every single day. And they can ask me, well, what does that mean? Every single day. Tom, we don't understand what that means. How do you stay ahead of people? We're trying to ask you, what do you do to stay ahead of people? Every single day. I don't have a relaxing day. I don't have a oh, this is my day, I'm going to take a nap. This is my day, I'm going to sit back and just, you know, go out for pizza. Every single day. You have to fight every single day right now. We're in a position right now, most of us are in a position right now where we're not, we're not happy with our lives. We want more out of our lives. How can you be unhappy with something and then find content inside of unhappiness? I'm just... I get lost with that. People tell me, man, Kurt, I want to make this money. I want to change my life. I want to, I want to open this business. I want to do these different things. And I'm like, well, what are you doing it? You know, well, I am able to really do this stuff. What, what is your plan? Cause you know, the money is out there. We just got to go get it. Are you, are you studying? Are you back testing? Are you applying? Are you, are you really going hard at it? Are you really feeling like you having breakthroughs or you having, you know, areas where you stuck a little bit? Cause I can help you if you stuck. Well, you know, it's my time and, you know, and I got, I got the other job and then, you know, I got class and, you know, the bills and then my car, my, I got a tire flat. Da, 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 da. I'm like, okay, I get a life. Life happens. That's going to keep happening. Can't do nothing about life. But what are you doing? Oh, you know, usually when I get back from work, man, I'm just so tired. I just go ahead and go to sleep. And then the swipe trades, they show up while I'm asleep. Swipes. Swipes supposed to give you financial freedom? That was the plan? The swipes was going to swipes was gonna open up the business for you? The swipe trades was going to make sure your kids went to college? The swipes was going to make sure that your bills was paid? <laughs> That was the that was the jump when we got an IML. The swipes going swipes going to take us to freedom. Oh lordy, like come on, man. Let's be real. You knew what was, you knew what was required of you when you signed up. You knew you was gonna have to put some sweat equity into this. When I look up these traders, I mean, I spend my time looking up profitable traders, right? Some of you guys may not even heard some of these names. I'm about to name off: Edward Lampert, all right? Stanley uh, uh, Druckmiller. Paul Tudor Jones, Kenneth, Kenneth Griffin, David Tepper, John Paulson. All of these men are worth more than $1 billion each. The, the, the lowest one I named, $2.5 billion. Yeah. The last guy I just named, he's worth $11 billion, all from trading Forex. I'll wait. I'll wait. So you telling me it's no money out here. you telling me it's a scam. you telling me everybody loses. This man made $11, million, $11 billion, I'm sorry. He made $11 billion trading Forex. The first guy named Edward Lampert, he made, he made $1 billion his first year trading Forex. i wait. So you tell me all I got to do is go hard and I can make that kind of money? Okay. I went hard at doing things I didn't like to do. <laughs> so what's the difference now? <laughs> what's the difference now, right? I, I, I went hard at jobs I hated going to every day. I'm in there going, going hard at my job, picking this up, taking abuse from the manager, dealing with the, with the supervisors, dealing with my coworkers that's lazy, carrying a slack, right? And then I get into this where it's based on my efforts and I want to make excuses? Man, please. <laughs> Man, please. So with that being said, I love y'all. I can't wait to make these trades with y'all this week. Plug into the Discord. Get going. And the thing with Discord is, I'm going to give you guys like a heads up before I make the video on it. The Discord has tiers to it. When you first come in, you're a one-star trader. If you're a one-star trader, that means you haven't gotten your demo set up. You haven't gotten your broker set up. You haven't gotten anything going on your phone or your laptop. We got to get all those different products and services rolling for you. 
Now, after that, you go into two-star trader. Once you're a two-star trader, now you're on demo, you're going through basics one through four, you're going through IML Academy, you're plugging into the products, you're learning, you're a product of the product, you're actually just becoming a student and you're really getting your grips on everything. After that, we get you into three-star trader where you're trading live money. And as we start opening up these different levels and tiers, now you start actually seeing the different levels in the, in, in the Discord where you have different training sessions, you have different levels of you know in, in information that you can plug into now. Because when you come in at one, as a one-star trader, you can't see all the tiers. Then when you get moved to a two-star trader, you can't see all the tiers. Once you get a three-star trader where you're trading live money, now you see everything in the Discord. Now all of it's open to you. So I want to make sure you guys know that it's not just a couple tabs in there. We really went hard on this. We want to make sure that this was something where step by step by step, we can spoon feed you the information and not overwhelm you day one, week one, week, you know, month one. We want to make sure you guys can get everything you need in a smooth, digestible fashion. Because I feel like in the beginning, we were just shoving so much at you guys. Like, go watch the back office videos. Get on the scanner. Watch the, well, get on the web analyzer now. Learn Kurt's strategy. It was like, dude, I just signed up. I can't even get my phone to cut on long enough to do what you told me to do. So. Just step by step now. So Discord is built for that. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end the video. It will be in the Trading Get Paid group. You can go back and watch it in there. I thought I lost y'all with Jay Wayne. He's back. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and, <laughs> and close this out. And let me go here. Go ahead and.